Hello, everyone. Oh, it's very loud. Thank you for coming tonight. We're going to get started with the presentation in a few moments. So if you can take a seat at the tables, uh, starting with the ones that are closer to the front, if you don't mind. And we can have four to six people per table, probably. Say soccer game. Uh, so the mayor's here and who else is here? I don't see any I don't see any other council members. Just Jamie, I don't see I'm just gonna say one more thing. All right, go ahead. And I just want to remind the GPAC members to sit one at each table if you wouldn't mind for us. We'd appreciate you distributing. Thank you. All right, well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming this evening. This is kind of exciting. It's our first um, workshop for the, for the update of the general plan, local coastal program, um, as well as the uh, downtown and waterfront strategic planning process, which is sort of an offshoot of that effort. Um, hopefully, we're going to get some, uh, some good input this evening. Uh, our, the update of the general plan and local coastal program uh, has been a long time coming. Um, usually these, this document has about a 20 year horizon and ours is almost 30 years old, so it's time. Um, I think with that, I think we'd like to introduce to you some of the folks that are associated with that. So we have our Michael Baker team, some city staff members, and then the GPAC, if you guys could all stand up. Um, and we have, I think, one elected official, the mayor, if you mind standing up. Uh, I'm going to have you guys all introduce yourselves. Um, Starting with me, I suppose. Um, uh, my name is Scott Graham. I'm the community development manager for the city. Um, it's my job to sort of shepherd this um, this project through the process. Um, I think uh, if we want to go on, you want to sure. go this way? Yeah. yeah. All right. My name is Chris. Oh, should I attack the mic? Well, I, we, well, we could. Yeah, I don't know. My name is Chris Reed. Um, I'm with Michael Baker International, the uh, contractor working, one of the contractors working on this project, and I'm the assistant project manager. Great. My name is Laurel Apple. Thank you, everyone. So my name is Christelle Blackford. I'm uh, on the consultant team with Michael Baker International. And um, I'm going to be facilitating the night, running us through the agenda and the activities and keeping us on time. So we're here tonight to share information with you about Plan More Obey. Um, and perhaps even more importantly, we're here to collect input from you and hear your feedback. So we're going to share some input um, through a short presentation that we'll do shortly. Um, and then we're going to go into some small group activities. Uh, we're, in terms of collecting feedback, we had some uh, boards around the room. We had uh, two visioning boards and a coastal resiliency board. And we hope that you had a chance to um, review those and add feedback and comments. If you haven't had a chance yet, you can do that at the end of the night before you leave. Um, and then finally, for the small group activities, we're going to be 
wanting to hear from you about what you love about your city and your downtown and waterfront areas and what you see as some opportunities um, and some growth areas that we can work from. At the very end of this meeting, we're going to be doing a public comment period. This is formally a special meeting of the GPAC, as there's a quorum of GPAC members here. And so our chair, Dr. Teft, will lead a formal public comment period at the end. At the end of the short presentation we're about to give you, however, we will have a question and answer period. So if you have any questions about the um, presentation content about Plan Morrow Bay, we'll welcome your questions at that time. So uh, now I'm going to hand it over to Chris Reed, who's going to tell you about Plan Morrow Bay. All right, so let me just start by asking, how many people know what a general plan is? Can you just raise your hand? All right, so a lot of people, but not everybody. So I just want to start by, by using a metaphor to describe what we're doing here. Um, we're doing a long-term strategic plan for the city. And a good metaphor is to think of a long-term financial plan. So, you know, we have something that we want to achieve 30 years from now. And to do that, we're going to set some financial goals and then create a strategy to achieve those goals. So the difference between that and what a general plan is, is that in the context of, of local planning, this is a long-range plan for development and conservation. And in this case, it's, it's through the year 2040. And instead of looking at issues related to, to personal finance and things like that, we're looking at a much broader uh, range of issues, including land use. So um, where do we want residential land uses, commercial land uses, coastal dependent land uses to be in the year 2040? Issues related to circulation. Um, how do we want people, goods, services, cars, bicycles to move through the city in the year 2040? Uh, we're looking at issues related to conservation and open space. So how do we want our natural resources to function through the year 2040 and beyond? Um, issues related to public safety. So how can we achieve our goals despite the fact that we might have earthquakes or um, sea level rise or other natural hazards? Issues related to noise. If, if we make decisions about land use and circulation now, is that going to affect you know, some noise pollution issues in our city? And finally, how do we maintain all the great coastal resources we have here and, and make sure that the coast is a place that people can access? Now, it, we're doing this because strategic long-term planning is a good idea. It helps us achieve our goals. Um, but also because there are state laws that are very specific about these issues. So those topics I just mentioned are codified in, in California law as it relates to general plans, um, as well as in the California Coastal Act. So. Um, in doing these planning efforts, we're, we're meeting our legal obligations under California law. So Plan Morrow Bay consists of a general plan and then a local coastal program. And both of these things, again, are long-term visions for the future. And, and we're really just going to call them Plan Morrow Bay because they're basically going to be the same document. And what that document, one of the things it does is it establishes a vision for the future. So we can't work towards a goal in 2040 if we don't agree or have a good sense of what that goal is. And so the board back there identifies values and visions that have been drafted so far in the process. And that will really be the guiding hand as we move through this process. And we achieve those visions and values through goals, policies, actions and programs. Goals, again, are those things we want to, to be able to say in 2040. In 2040, do we want to say this about Morro Bay? Do we want to say that about Morro Bay? Policies are those statements that the city will follow when faced with challenging questions. So um, do we want to develop in this parcel? Well, let's go back to the general plan and see what we all said about that five years ago, six years ago, when we got together as a community. And then actions and programs are those steps, those things that we want to intentionally do as a city to, to actively achieve those goals. Once we're done with having that general plan, that strategic plan to achieve those goals, that'll be implemented through the zoning code. So, so those of you that interact with the zoning code know that it, it's also in places old and in some places potentially challenging to use. So, We'll be doing a comprehensive zoning update, code update as a result, of, or through this project. 
and also through various strategic and action plans. So those of you that, that come to city meetings know that there's a lot of projects going on in the city right now um, that, that deal with planning for the future. The general plan provides a large umbrella under which we, again, set goals and achieve them. Action plans, such as the um, downtown and waterfront strategic plan, which we'll be talking about more tonight, are, are much shorter term, um, much more focused ways of, of achieving those goals. And the general plan process, the Plan Morro Bay process, will be informed by other city planning projects. So the outcome of the water reclamation facility process will affect our goals and how we achieve them. Similarly, uh, the outcome of, of ongoing strategic plans or visioning processes, such as the Embarcadero Widening and Centennial Staircase Plan, our planning process will need to incorporate that and make sure that it's all consistent. So whereas um, the general plan and local coastal program might be that, that long-term financial plan that we have in, in the metaphor, the downtown and waterfront strategic plan might be you know, in your personal life might be a budget for the next year or your spending plan for a, a single part of your life. This is just a much more focused, um, both in time and space, planning effort. And it, it, it's, we're undertaking it at the same time because there's some real strategic benefits to doing a long-term comprehensive plan and then also a more focused plan. So the downtown and waterfront strategic plan is looking at a, a unified vision for the downtown and the waterfront ways of identifying physical connections between those two spaces, identifying the appropriate land uses in those spaces, um, identifying specific public space and street improvements, and then also developing a unified um, brand and set of design guidelines so that when you're in the downtown and waterfront, you have a really specific sense of place. So this is a not to scale timeline of the projects as they're happening right now. So, this just illustrates everything that we're doing. So under the plan Morro Bay umbrella, it includes the general plan and local coastal program, as well as the downtown waterfront strategic plan. Um, and this just shows how, so the city's also doing an economic development plan right now, and the outcome of that will feed into our work, as well as, again, the Embarcadero widening and Centennial Staircase vision, the outcome of that will also feed into our work. This is just a timeline of how we're going to get to the draft general plan. We are somewhere either in front of or behind the very first dot right now. So um, right now we're conducting wide ranging research on all the existing conditions in the city. So everything ranging from the things you're seeing on these poster boards to what kind of natural hazards affect the city to what kind of natural resources are in the city, the different land uses in the city how the economy currently functions in the city. We're looking at all of that right now. And some of the issues we'll talk about later come out of that research. We'll move forward from that to key issues and policies, probably in midsummer. Then as we move into the fall, we'll start to look at opportunity areas in the city, look at some land use alternatives discussions. So how do we want to cha potentially change the land use in our city? And then as we move into the end of the year, we'll be drafting the downtown waterfront strategic plan as well as the general plan. So that's just a, a really quick overview of, of what a general plan, what a LCP is, and, and more specifically, what plan Morro Bay is. Um, I think there's longer, uh, there's longer ways to talk about that. In fact, we have at some of the previous GPAC meetings, and those are all available on the city's YouTube website. So if you want the uh, non-Cliff Notes version of that, feel, feel free to visit that. So um, I'm going to hand the microphone back to Christelle, who's going to talk about some of the outreach that we've done so far. All right, thank you, Chris. Um, so. To think about that timeline, uh, you might be wondering when will ha I have an opportunity to weigh in. So we have already done some outreach to date and um, before this meeting, and we'll be continuing to, to interface, hopefully, with all of you and the larger community as we move forward. So you saw that we have a vision statement and values uh, statement at the back of the room. And um, hopefully you had a chance to review it, and uh, please do so before you leave if you haven't. Um, so the way that this was developed was based on a telephone survey 
that was coupled with a, a website where you could go and see and listen to actually people's submissions. So you might have uh, participated in this telephone survey in late 2015. And we took all of that input and together with input that we received through a series of meetings with City Council Planning Commission and the General Plan Advisory Committee, which we're all calling the GPAC for short, and, uh, in case that hadn't become clear yet, was uh, used to create this vision statement and the values. Um, and this is important guiding document that will ensure that the technical work is really in line with what all of you imagine and want to see for the future of your city. Um, So in addition to that, we have the General Plan Advisory Committee um, ongoing meetings. And um, the role of the General Plan Advisory Committee is really to um, have a focused community oversight of document review. And so the, the General Plan Advisory Committee members were appointed by City Council after an application process. And they're doing really like the, um, the hard work of slothing through all of these documents and reviewing the long, long documents uh, on behalf of the community, really. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to take an opportunity to reintroduce Dr. Teft. Um, and he's going to tell you about some of the outreach work that GPAC is doing. Um, and I want to also just say that you're all invited to all General Plan Advisory Committee meetings, which happen um, monthly on the third Thursday of each month, usually here. Um, and it's a public meeting, and you're always welcome to come and listen and provide comment. So I'll just invite Dr. Teft up now. OK, thank you, Crystal. They gave me one minute, so don't get nervous. Um, <laughs> I have to say, so far at, up to this point, the City Voice survey has been probably the primary uh, public input uh, uh, that has been informing the GPAC process. Um, and I would like to say that I have actually listened to every single phone call in the City Voice survey. Um, the Following that, the, the GPAC has been reaching out uh, primarily by email. The response to that has not been voluminous, but some of the responses that we've gotten have been very thoughtful and, and have been uh, very useful and in great detail. And we've actually come up with some, or, or they've actually brought up some points that nobody else had thought of previously. Um, what we would like to do uh, going forward is to reach out to groups within the community and meet personally with each one of you. So we, I have uh, sign-up forms on the table uh, at the front uh, for any of you who would like to have a member of the GPAC come to your group and meet with you and discuss this. Now, what we're, what we're currently still discussing is the vision and the values. Okay, so we're, this is still sort of, you know, um, broad topics, uh, but we would love to meet with any of you that are interested. Please sign up and um, we'll get in contact with you to arrange a convenient time. Um, you know, there's um, th there's certainly, there's an outreach to stakeholders, but the GPAC considers every resident of Morro Bay to be a stakeholder, so don't be shy. If you're not a member of an organized group, you know, you could be, it, it, we could be talking about the Elks or the Eagles or the FBI or whatever. Uh, but uh, if you would like to just get a group of your neighbors together and meet with a representative of the GPAC under where it says or name of your organization, just put down neighborhood group and we'll be happy to get together and meet with you. Great, thank you, Dr. Teft. Um, okay, so we're going to move to take questions at this point, um, and then we're going to follow that with our small group activities. So before we take questions, I just wanted to take a minute to, um, you know, remind everyone of our courteous ground rules for discussion. Um, so raise your hand if you have a question. We'd love to, to hear your question. We'll take one question at a time. Um, but do please keep your comments concise so that everyone has a chance to speak, of course, and um, listen to the perspectives of others with respect. This goes for when you're having your small group discussions, too. Um, everyone has differing opinions, and that's wonderful. 
and we're here to he hear everyone's opinions. And um, please turn off your cell phone ringers if you haven't already done so. So we're going to do um, Q&A now. We have a floating microphone that we'll walk around with if you have a question about uh, what Plan More Obey is, about any of these technical terms that we've covered, about anything related to the plan, we'll take those now. We're, we're recording, so we'd like you to use the microphone. I have, a question, I have a question about the local coastal plan, or whatever it's called nowadays. I've never read it, but is that a part of the um, general plan, or is it like an expanded bullet point, or do you have to do the general uh, plan first before you do the local coastal plan? Which came first? Thanks for the question. I think Chris is going to answer that one. Yeah, so there are two different requirements under California law, broad reaching requirements. So the first is general plan law. And a lot of you raised your hands when you said you were familiar with the general plan. So that's just, you know, it looks at land use, circulation, things like that. Um, California also has the California Coastal Act, which preserves coastal resources, coastal access and, access and things like that. That act set aside something called the coastal zone. And if you look at the map, that's actually a good segue. Um, see the yellow line that kind of snakes into the city and then back out? Everything but that little triangle <laughs> that's east of the yellow line is in the coastal zone. So that means that the California Coastal Commission has um, permitting authority for what's called a coastal development permit. Now the way to bring that authority back to local jurisdiction is to have a local coastal program that basically achieves the goals of the California Coastal Act. So for, um, they can be two separate documents. And what's great is since so much of this is the coastal zone so much of the city is in the coastal zone. We've t spoke, we talked with Coastal Commission about having a single plan so that if you want to, um, you know, want to do a project and you want to see what regulations apply to your property, it's all in one place. And Coastal Commission said that that, that works. So it'll be Plan More Obey is the name of the plan. And for legal reasons, or that fulfills the legal requirements of general plan law and coastal act law. But we're calling it Plan More Obey. Any additional questions? Yes, in the back. Hi. I, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm curious, are you going to use the same planning areas from the 1988 general plan in this general plan? Thank you for the question. So as part of the, the background work that we're doing right now, the community baseline assessment, we looked at all the character areas in the city and looked at, at different parts of the city, but um, it's large, it's, the existing general plan is old enough that it's largely, you know, we'll look to it as a data source, but we're, it's mostly a redo of it. So, yeah, that's right. Anyone else? Burning questions? Okay, great. We'll have more time at the end as well, and the team will stick around if you have questions you want to ask individually. So we're going to move on to our small group activities, which is really the meat of our evening. And we're going to we're hoping to get lots of input from you during these activities and have some fun interactive discussions. So um, it looks like we're pretty well distributed across the room. At each table, you'll have your facilitator, who you already were introduced to. But if you all just want to raise your hand again, there are a couple of people who came in late. So you have one uh, facilitator at each table. Um, if we have any tables that are particularly light on people, we could combine two tables. Um, so at each table, you've got your small group facilitator, and you've also got one GPAC member. And we're really happy to have the GPAC here at each table. and. Um, because they're really here to listen to you and to help ask some clarifying questions, and also to record comments. So before, if, if we want to take a minute to reorganize, and then I'll continue. Seems like there's going to be some reorganization happening.
Oh no. What? The, the two third empty water bottles. Which one is mine? <laughs> so if everyone can have a seat again once you've found your new table, and then um, I'm just going to give a high-level explanation of the first activity before you dive in. OK, great. Thank you. So for the first activity, we're going to be thinking, put your, put your hat on, focus your mind on downtown and the waterfront. We're really just focused on downtown and the waterfront for this first activity. So um, the purpose of the activity is that we want to hear from you. What do you love about downtown and the waterfront? And what would you change? What do you see as some opportunities um, for, for growth and, and enhancement? So what you're going to do is you're going to all focus your attention on that large scale map that you have at each one of your tables. And first you're going to have a facilitated discussion. And please look to your facilitator to walk you through this activity. There's some discussion questions that we want you to talk about. And then after that, you're going to actually be placing stickers on the map and writing down your comments. And I want to stress that if you have ideas, Either if it's something that you love about downtown, an asset that you perceive, some resource that you really want to keep around, please write down not only what it is, but also what it is you love about it, or why you think it's important, why you think we should maintain or enhance it. Um, and the same thing goes for opportunities. But also the, the GPAC members will be there recording your comments. And um, we just want you to have a, a good and productive conversation. And in about 20 minutes, we'll come back together. And the facilitator for each table is going to share a couple of highlights from your conversation. So with that, I'll let you all get started.